Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Nur Atika Binti Zikifi. I am a 4 year student and majoring in Medical Physics at School of Physics and Physics Science of Malaysia. Now, I'm going to explain on how angiography functions in diagnosing the pulmonary embolism of COVID-19 patients. Let's go. Hmm, I'm so worried. The COVID-19 pandemic has had devastating medical and economic consequences globally. For your information, coronaviruses are a large family of enveloped ribonucleic acid RNA viruses found in animals. Pulmonary embolism, or we call as PE, is one of the known sequels of COVID-19 infections. In Malaysia, among the 74,840 patients of COVID-19, 368 of them developed PE as reported. These cases demonstrated that COVID-19 may lead to pulmonary embolism by causing a blood coagulation problem. Patients with COVID-19 who develop PE appear to have different characteristics than those who develop PE without COVID-19. These include more first-time venous thromboembolic events, less common use of estrogen therapy, and smaller or more peripheral growth location. So, what is pulmonary embolism? So, the PE is a blood truth that develops in the blood vessel in the body. It is often developed in the leg. It then travels to a lung artery where it suddenly blocks the blood flow. The most common symptoms include the sudden shortness of the breath and chest pain that usually works with breathing. People who have pulmonary embolism may also have symptoms of deep brain thrombosis or DVT. Along with a complete medical history and physical exam, tests used to look for PE may include the chest ray ventilation perfusion scan, CT pulmonary angiography, CT scan, MRI, duplex ultrasound, blood test, and electrocardiogram or we can call as EKG. But in this video, I will focus on CT pulmonary angiography as my contact. Computerized tomography pulmonary angiography or CTPA has become the first line imaging examination to detect the occurrence of PE. CT pulmonary angiography CTPA is a medical diagnostic that employs compute tomography angiography to obtain an image of pulmonary arteries. It may be used to diagnose the pulmonary embolism. CTPA is typically only requested if embolism is suspected clinically. Radiographer or healthcare use CT pulmonary angiography because it is a preferred choice of imaging in diagnosis of PE due to its minimally invasive nature for patients whose only requirement for the scan is an intravenous line. In addition, our blood vessels do not show clearly or normal X-ray, so a special dye needs to be injected into patient's blood first. This highlights the patient's blood vessels, allowing the doctor to see any problems. The process of CTPA for PE with COVID-19 and non-COVID-19 patients is the same. The difference is only the PPE of the healthcare where when they caring for patients with communicable infections. They need to wear transmission-based equipment including gloves, gown, and face shield. Now, let us proceed to the procedure of the performing CTPA. Before CTPA procedure, the patients may be asked to attend a hospital appointment to check if they can have CTPA or not. This may involve being asked about the medical history, about any medicine that the patient is taking, and having general tests to check the general health. Before sitting for CTPA, the patient may be asked to remove their clothes. If so, they will be given a hospital gown to wear. They may be asked to remove jewelry or other objects. Then, the radiographer will place a cannula, which is a very thin tube in vein in patient's arm. The patients will lie on the CT bed on their back with arm above the head. 
Estradiol will be injected into the cardula in patient's arm. The CT bed will move inside the CT scanner. Then the CT bed will move in and out of the machine of a few times. Patient will be asked to hold breath for a few seconds during each scan. During the scan, patient will be able to talk to the radiographer over an intercom and the radiographers will be able to see you throughout the scanning. The scanning process takes around 10 minutes. After the procedures, the cannula is removed and pressure is placed on the card to stop any bleeding. After CTPA is done, the patient needs to wait while the doctor checks the scan image. If any blockage are identified, the doctor will discuss the next step with the patient. This is an example of angiogram image of positive COVID-19 patients. Corona CTPA image identifies bilateral pulmonary emboli that involve the left main pulmonary artery, distal right main pulmonary artery, right upper lobe pulmonary artery, and proximal segmental vessels. CTPA provides a number of potential advantages over other imaging modalities in diagnosis of PE, including direct visualization of the embolus, allowing simultaneous evaluation for PE and DVT. It also has higher diagnostic accuracy, ability to provide a clear result, fast acquisition time, and the most important is readily available in the most hospitals. However, the non-selective use of CTPA has several disadvantages. Hmm. This includes long-term risk of exposure to high doses of radiation and a small but definite risk of kidney injury due to intravenous contrast. In conclusion, 37.1% of the CTPA examination were positive for PE in Malaysia of patients who had COVID-19. PE in COVID-19 patients is a problematic issue that in our series predominantly seems to affect segmental arteries and the right lung, especially its upper lobe. Thus, copied tomographic pulmonary angiography is the last choice of meta imaging to detect the occurrence of pulmonary embolism. Okay guys, that's all from me. Hope you all enjoy my content for this video. Till we meet again and have a nice day all. Thank you and bye.